Hey guys, this is uh, Level Up, uh, session 79, goddammit. And we are here today with uh, uh, Derek and Andre Wallen. Hey guys. Hello. Hey. Oh, what, what are you eating there, Andre? Oh, sorry, um, I'm chewing on an apple. Uh, <laughs> I just need to get my blood sugar up. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very professional. I'm very professional. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know, man. We keep it casual. Okay, easy, man. It's fine. Sorry. Okay, so this time we are really honored to again have Andre Wall in today here with us. And uh, Andre is obviously a ridiculously talented concept artist that worked on projects uh, such as Oblivion, Star Wars, uh, Seven, Rock One, Godzilla, and way more. And uh, maybe more importantly, his own IP, which we'll talk about today, um, which I'm really excited to talk about. Um, so welcome to all of you. And um, we've been absent for some time. Um, yeah, I guess. Been a while. yeah, right. So let's get right into it. Andre, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. Uh, a little rusty with those sessions, I have to say. It's been a while, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's been yeah. a good while, actually. Uh, like a couple of months. Yeah, well, when was the last time you did a um, uh, level up? It was half a year, Archer, right? I think half a year. Yeah, we always say, yeah, I'll see you next month. And then we. we <laughs> Out of nothing. <laughs> for, it's better to finally months. come back than never, you know? So. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I know you've been busy, Wojtek. Um, all right. Yeah. yeah I I've witnessed been... it first time. <laughs> <laughs> first person. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, we worked better with Andre for a little while. Um, yeah, that was exciting. Um, I wanted to go back, go back in time right now, into your very beginnings, Andrea. Um, mm, I the think good old days. I've, Good old horrible art days. I think <laughs> we've all been there. Um, yeah. The first time I discovered your art, I think it was um, Oblivion stuff. That just blew me away. You can see it on my screen right now. Um, it was just the perfect to me when I'm looking at it. Um, was for me a perfect marry of um, of a design and a finished keyframe look. Uh, so you, you sort of brought those two elements together to uh, deliver those beautiful concept pieces that also have this awesome design sense and lighting information. It was mm. just amazing and really inspiring. Oh, thank you. Um, Thanks, yeah. It wasn't like a groundbreak project for you, uh, if I'm not mistaken? Or... Oh, yeah. Yeah, Andre? Def yeah definitely. Um, it was the first. Um, it was the first big, uh, yeah, the big feature film that I worked on, and and um, it sort of came out of left field for me because it started out as the. I'm sure people have heard me tell this story now, uh, on other forums, but it started out as a graphic novel um, on a pretty small scale, and then it just grew into this feature film, and it was just a never-ending project. It just. Um, uh, kept going on and off for for four years. Uh, it took up uh, most of my time during those during those four years. So uh, it was everything from it's you know it started as a graphic novel. It, it it got picked up by Disney. It was a big Disney feature at one point, and then Disney dropped it, and Universal picked it up, and it got you know it got darker and um, so you've more... been involved uh, throughout all of those. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Company exchanges and rights. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I should I should give a lot of credit to. Um, I mean, I, I I really appreciate those those kind words. I mean, it, it does mean a lot to to have uh, spend when you've spent so much time on on one project. You know, you you sort of build up um, a level of anxiety uh, for when the day finally comes that you get to show this stuff. Uh, show the world that, that what you've been working on for so long, and, and if it's it, if it's a shitty product, then you know that's, yeah. that's four years you're never going to get back. So I'm I'm happy exactly. that people are pleased with the with the look of the film, and and um, I should give a lot of credit to to um, uh, the production designer on it, which um, which is Darren Guilford. He was uh, he kept pushing me. He and he and and and, um, and Joe Kaczynski, the director of the film. They just kept pushing and pushing um, the, the the art direction, 
Um, and it, it was, um, it's definitely, uh, you know, it's a big change to, to work on, on a film where, you know, the, the composition is of, of such great value to, to the rest of the, uh, I mean, to the creative leads, because usually, Oh yeah, you don't have that 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 fortune, um, yeah. like that that sort of blessing when you yeah, work that, on a project. And yeah, you know all about mm -hmm. that, Wojtek. <laughs> yeah, just add a little more detail in in the top right corner, please. Add more <laughs> right. particles. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I um, they they were both, you know, so concerned with every frame looking good. You know, Joe wanted to make this. He wanted th th this movie is, uh, you know, um, I mean, I've, I've said it before the, the Blu-ray even has a, as a feature where you can just turn off the, the dialogue and just have the music and, and, um, along with the visuals and you can just play the movie as a, as a music video <laughs> essentially. And so he wanted to create a work of art, like a masterpiece. And, and, and that, that, that allowed us, that allowed the team to just work and, and iterate all of these uh, keyframes all of these scenes um for for ages until they you know he thought they they were perfect and there, there was nothing being rushed on it mm -hmm. i'm sure he would he would disagree but but um for us in the art department it was definitely uh, you know we got plenty of time to 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 work on this to i have it. really felt it while i was watching a movie i really felt that um there was something different about this this movie in terms of CGI. I um, right. it didn't felt as soft and uh, sort of gloomy and gummy as the rest of the movies at that time. It felt way more like it it did, it wasn't over processed with like maybe it wasn't the the classiness of the compositions that were just simple, you know, not right. super busy everywhere and just calm. And that was really refreshing to see. I really love the, the special I, effects. And yeah. now uh, you're talking about directors and art directors being really sensitive about this, and it all comes together into this. Um... Yeah, I mean, again, it was so refreshing to to have that as a sort of um, um, you know um, an outspoken goal from. From the director himself, like the, the, he wanted the the compositions to be very, very, you know, um, simple. Um, and and all of the references that I got sent on that film was um, uh, mainly by a photographer. I can't remember his name now, but it was um, he had this this wonderful um, library of of his work where it was just like he had photos of um, you know a single. Uh, um, lamppost or you know um, a single tree on a desolate meadow or something like that and it was um, that was like Joe's you know main inspiration for this product it, it was supposed to be barren and desolate and, and still beautiful uh, so he wanted something he wanted to find that the beautiful aspect of of of, um, of a very barren uh, you know landscape and, and, and um, so you just go to Iceland and it's done, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can you can sort of tell if you look at my Oblivion um, my Oblivion artwork, you can sort of tell when um, the location was decided because we uh, some of the earlier paintings that I did when Iceland hasn't been chosen as the primary shooting location um, were a lot more intricate and and, and um, you know, um, complex in, in, in terms of the, um, you know, what was in the frame. It was just more, it was messier and it was, there's was more stuff going on. Whereas, yeah. you know, once the, once I got all those, obliv I mean, all those, um, Iceland photos to use as a, use as a plate, um, it, it all, it all changed and, and became the, uh, the look that, 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 that is now. So, you know, I, um, iconic for for that movie. So, well, uh, so now we've seen the the beautiful art. Let's yes. uh, take a look uh, at, at the, the origin. <laughs> yeah, the shit. Right. So, um, when exactly have you started doing this, and for how long are you now a concept artist? I, I will just switch to your um, screen now. Can I do it? No NDA stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, okay. no. It's all good. Um, let me know when it's. Yeah, 
it when is it's up. there. Right. Um, I started, um, I found Photoshop when I was 18 or 19. Um, I, um, I watched some tutorial by um, a guy called, um, I can never pronounce his name, but he, he was the guy who uh, created the Cygium forums um, for anyone who's an old school concept artist. No idea. Uh, well, his name is Zabi Eng, I think. He's a, he's a concept artist now working at um, Valve, but he made this tutorial where he used the dodge and burn tool to uh, create his paintings. So this wow. image that you're looking at right now was the <laughs> one of the very first, if not the first, Photoshop um, uh, painting that I did. Um, did it all with a mouse. I know it's hard to fathom that, that a masterpiece like this could be created with a mouse, but uh it's quite terrible oh, as you can as you can see I but uh you and and you <laughs> that's quite a progress man <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you can even uh, you can see my old um um uh, my old like school old email kind of email <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> holy shit! Oh, oh, um, what's the story here i'm interested in the story uh, of this piece story so, so, i don't know man i i just i don't think there was a <laughs> the story is pretty i mean it's pretty self-explanatory i would say the um okay so what's, what's going on in another it? question let me rephrase that so um you were a metalhead <laughs> yes it's more yes, like animal uh, kind of thing <laughs> right <laughs> you know what i think i just i was looking at at, at zabi eng's work L let me just quickly bring it up because you'll see what i mean when i yeah he still has it on his website, which I now can't even enter. It's okay. When you see the, the image I used as a reference, you'll understand uh, my. Okay. So this was the one. This was this was the um, oh, okay. <laughs> painting that I saw. And it was just, oh my God, that's so cool. You know, that, that, that was just the most. I don't know why I was just so. Uh, mesmerized by this um, style, by this yeah. um, painting and this style, yeah. And he, and he explained how he used the dodge and burn tool for it. So I immediately uh, started fiddling around and, and um, came up with this <laughs> this um, mm -hmm. interpretation of that. Um, and then uh, this is another old <laughs> old one. It's uh, <laughs> nice. it's uh, as you can see, I'm <laughs> I got but a great sense of depth here. And attempts. What, what, what's that? Reminds me of Darek's uh, very first paintings, a Space Marine. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all been there. <laughs> uh, I, oh, definitely, yeah. I remember, uh, you know, one of the most encouraging things I've ever done was to go back and look at Marek. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Look at his stuff, his early stuff. It's, I mean, it's incredible. <laughs> to, to, that, it's, that, that, <laughs> it's incredible that he's. Actually, early stuff was really good at the point that it still holds up, you know, so... So, you did that yeah. with the mouse too, or you had the tablet? Yeah, this is, this is... No, 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 this is all um, mouse action. Holy shit, okay. As, <laughs> as, as, so, um... Oh, this is quite big. No. Um, so, what well, year um, is this? This has to be... Okay, let me quickly look at the I um, just want to get a general idea like what's the how many years has passed from this time let me see if I, if I can find uh, if it's still on the info on uh, the file info okay no, no? Oh, okay okay um, I would I think this is somewhere around 2000 and ah oh, god 2000 and Two five, or seven, five. Okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's not it's not that old, uh, unfortunately. Um, this another is another one. another one. Um, I think I had made some some progression at this oh, point. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, yeah. We still. This was all. I, I I got something about heads and decapitation. I I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, I never thought about it, but, but when I look at my older stuff, there's always like a head being cut off or some sort of gruesome so, aspect to it. That's so brilliant. You have to revisit um, the subject. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, I got a lot of demons. Um, oh, okay, so here's here's one. Two thousand two. You know what? This this might have been even older. This this is probably two thousand and two as well, or three. Mm around that time um but yeah starship <laughs> starship troopers yeah this is another um beautiful um attempt at, at at mastering the uh, dodge and burn tool technique um this was I, the first I love time the, I, I love the multiple shadows kind of a thing that right right uh, yes uh, <laughs> <laughs> i had it all figured out and as you can see, I had some beautiful lens flare action going on as well. I think that's, uh, these were my first lens flares. Um, and um, I remember that? being so happy with this. Uh, that was not me. Dark, uh, yeah, that's was, direct. It, uh, yeah, it was Polish sound. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Polish motorcycle. Uh, let, let me ask you a question. Like prior to those, or even um, analogically, you've been practicing also on paper, or you just fully did everything digitally back then? No, no, no. I mean, it was ever since I could hold a pen. I've been, you know, I've been drawing um, <laughs> mainly. Like, I guess it's been this sort of style. If you imagine this being like a, um, a just a pure line art. Uh, drawing mm -hmm. it was it was this sort of style that I usually did and it was m more like comic -y, like a comic strips I would do comic strips and stuff like that I wasn't that much into painting like landscapes or, or anything like that I don't but, know um, why but it reminds me of uh, Iron Maiden t-shirts I don't know why <laughs> <laughs> probably because it's so, so cool yeah right um, and I think that once. Oh, you have a whole folder called Andrea Greatest, Greatest Hits. Hits. <laughs> yeah. nice. This is not my doing. Uh, this is uh, Travis from my online course. So I did not name it Andre Greatest Hits. <laughs> Just want to. I want to point that out. I'm not that. Um, I don't have that level of hubris just yet. Uh, although I'm working okay, on it. Okay, show that show that compilation, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not gonna show everything, but but um, I'm just gonna put up a few of them. Uh, I hold on. I'm just gonna easier to just bring them up here. Um, yeah. So these are um, these were done after I got my my Wacom tablet. So this is all right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> what, what happened between? <laughs> You got the tablet, and that would change because the the jump is ridiculous. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, that. okay. Well, uh, so there's. Uh, I mean, I'm not giving you a fair representation of the uh, of the transition now. I, I, there's some horrible okay. looking paintings in here. If I'm okay, so so this is uh, this is when I started to. Um, I think this is yeah. This is when I got the Wacom tablet. So I was still into doing these um, weird characters. I'm not a character artist, so so I don't know why I was. Um, so determined to, to paint these, uh, but I, I kept yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What what, what uh, kept you going? What was the? Did you have any like art heroes that you wanted to become, or did you plan on a concept art career? Or no, it was it just... no. I, I I started studying three um, D uh, around two thousand and seven, uh, and I took the same course that that Levy did. Levy purify. Purify, yeah. So, and um, I, I, got, I was very inspired by him. I started to copy his style. Uh, you, you'll, you'll notice that, that um, my early years as a concept artist were uh, mainly me just trying to copy, um, uh, you know, the, the, the people that, that I looked up to. So I, I mm -hmm. was just uh, blatantly uh, ripping <laughs> off his style until it, someone pointed it out to me and it was just like, oh, uh, all right, uh, I better <laughs> try and find a, Different. Okay, so this is a lot of different shit in that um, folder. Uh, hold on. So yeah, I think I'm I'm trying to find the first speed painting I ever did because I I remember specifically specifically doing a painting where I where it sort of all of when everything sort of clicked uh -huh. in terms of me just because I was trying I was hanging out at the CG forums where like Craig Mullins and. Uh, John Libero uh, and, um, and um, 
all these the, all these great guys were hanging out and so i was very inspired by their stuff but i couldn't master that technique so i just kept um i kept doing it um and hold on let me see if i can find it yeah, I just turned your screen off. I can see you're going through some folders. Oh, so. oh thanks, thanks. Uh, I'll have it in a second. Um, yeah, I, but but it was just so difficult to wrap your head around because when you come from a line art background, and um, I don't know if if any of you guys can relate to this, but it, to, yeah. to go from that to using colors and and to to work, you know, doing landscape paintings and all this stuff. It was very, very difficult to wrap your head around it. And I can see a lot of people struggling with that as well. Yeah, the, um, the first switch was terrible. I had a similar situation, like when you are using like a pencil for many years or even like right. a pen, and then you start incorporating colors, you, you're you wondering like, what the fuck, I just can't pick that up, you know? I just don't know how to build the colors to make it look, you know, formalic and uh, believable, so. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a, it's a big transition. So, um, so anyway, I um, okay, I'm I'm probably not going to be able to find that. So you said you went, you started like um, studying 3D. Was it like a school or just a course or what was actually specifically in like polygon modeling or? Um, well, it was a 2D slash 3D course. It was quite, oh, okay. it was very broad. It, they, they wanted to go through everything, everything from animation to, you know, rendering and, and, and modeling and, and um, uh, compositing. So uh, th there was there was a lot of, of different areas. And, and I just remember not being uh, at all interested in, in doing my homework and just um, painting, try essentially. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, you know, I'd gotten my Wacom tablet. I was just, I was excited that I had all this free time because I had a normal job before that um, at a warehouse, uh, and I could never find the time to, you know, to to really uh, go all in with the the painting. So, mm -hmm. so what was the? Oh, you disappeared. Hello? To uh, for your very first, I don't know, freelance gig or an in-house job. I mean doing painting drawing concept art how how that transition looked like wait you you were you cut out there uh okay so I, missed, I missed the first part of the question sorry uh, i was wondering how that transition from the warehouse job to the freelance right. concept artist how did it look like um did oh, you uh, w when was that breakthrough breakthrough when you got your first gig um it was um uh, so i was working at the warehouse up until 2007. i took the course uh, I, I quit my job started the course did that for a year and then uh, levy was the one who recommended me to um uh, to a company that he had done some freelance work for called real time real time uk okay uh they're a cinematic studio in in in, in the uk so um, uh, just outside of Blackpool. So I got a, a job there over the summer that then uh, got extended uh, extended for, for, for a whole year. So I, I quit the course and, and uh, that was my, you know, that was my foot in the industry. So you uh, haven't so that, really f finished the course, you just jumped in and- Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, during the course, like, was it like anything that kind of injects like some knowledge to you? Because you said it was very broad, from like three D, two D compositing and all that stuff. Was it something that actually sparked the ideas of you know how to use like composition and everything, or was it just a useless for you that course? Uh, it was. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to find like like it was good in the sense that I got a good grasp on on. You know how the uh, CG process, the, the whole like full CG process is. I got I got this the, the broad strokes, so so to speak, of, of how to create, you know, um, moving imagery in 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 full CG, and um, mm -hmm. it sort of helped me to to get into the pipeline um, at the company where I was at. Um, 
a bit better, even though you're not in the pipeline as as a as a concept artist. I mean, I I I, un I understood the process. I understood what the what I was supposed to do in a, in a different way. Whereas if I had just gone straight into freelancing, mm -hmm. uh, not knowing and not having any basic 3D skills or, or anything like that, uh, I probably would have uh, approached it uh, a bit differently, and and uh, maybe I wouldn't have been as uh, you know as practical or as pragmatic uh, with what exactly it is yeah. that they're looking for. And I'm sure you guys know this. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you guys are way better with with 3D probably than than I ever was. Um, so you, you you realize how. Um, as well as as uh, doing matte painting work, I did mainly matte painting stuff at at, at that studio as well. Um, so uh, that that helped me to understand the you know um, what what I you know what you're supposed to focus on. What, what's what's important is it what's in the frame, not not you know. Uh, so that in-house experience was necessary for you to gain understanding on how this whole industry functions, more or less. Yeah, yeah. Just enough to give you exactly. Um, well, at least the post. Uh, yeah, yeah. At least the post-production part of it. Um, okay. And because um, you know, um, I mean, it all ties together, um, of course. But um, in the pre-production world, it's a bit different. Obviously, there's there's not a lot of CG in the in, mm -hmm. in pre-production. So, but it's still. I mean. You, you still benefit from from having a, a you know a good grasp on how post production is, um, you know how it works. Yeah, so, yeah, I think, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Mark. yeah, I think it's uh, it's something that I think we, uh, me and Wojtek, also experienced back then when we had our first kind of uh, in house gig that kind of let us know what the pipeline looked like, and it really helped to understand some of the functions of, you know, concept art and, you know, how all the pipeline works from behind right. the scenes. Because, you know, when for someone who is not in there yet, it might look differently than when you actually get there, you know. So even when you go later full on freelance, you kind of what the process looks like. And that's what I think also uh, um, help you set up the discipline or, you know, further kind of positioning in your yeah. skills. So summing up that road from uh, these line drawings up to your very first gig, can you yeah. give people that are in the similar stage? Because I think that's one of the mo the, the hardest parts of this whole journey. That was to me, and overall I'm seeing it in a lot of different uh, artists that we invite here, is that transition from good enough to have a job, but having a different job and different type of you know um, life and not being professional just yet and then transitioning would you get, would, do you have any advice for those people who are on the crossroads what would you uh, recommend doing um, is there right. anything that you extracted from your own experience um, I mean yes and no um, I mean everyone's journey into the uh, into the industry is, is is different and and um, you know there's no right or wrong way yeah. really when you break it down I mean the, the, the except for the you know the the, the common knowledge part uh, I mean uh, work you know practice a lot and, and and you know put your best foot forward and and you know uh, think quality over quantity you know show your best work and um, instead mm -hmm. of having 20 okay pieces uh, maybe you should have three really good pieces in your portfolio uh, like you know that sort of stuff um it sort of goes without saying i um i never have I, you know it, I, when i look back at my early years as a concept artist there, there's no there's nothing i would do differently uh, when i when i think back uh, I, i'm not saying that to be arrogant because I was just sticking to that old principle of, you know, just uh, painting a lot, uh, putting, updating my portfolio all the time. Yeah, it was just a lot of fucking hard work and a lot of effort, but I love doing it. So it was just 
it wasn't a big deal to me. I, I just I love doing it, and so to me it was all quite, you know, it wasn't easy Possible, in the sense yeah. that, but yeah, it just came very naturally to me. So I think that if you're struggling uh, with finding, you know, the motivation to keep going, uh, really. You know, uh, break, break, do a breakdown of your situation, and 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 really have a good think of what you really want to do. Is mm -hmm. are if you, you want sure that you want to? Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, because if you want it enough, don't don't um s don't sweat it if it takes, you know, uh, much longer than than it took for your buddy who got the first job straight away. Or, you know, you hear all these stories about people who just, you know, they they come straight out of school and get their first job right away yeah. at ILM or you know they get these great jobs at these big companies that everyone looks up to I mean fuck that uh, it, it, some of these big companies that everybody you know are just dying to work for uh, they're shit you know they're, 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 you you will have a miserable time there it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter what company you're at as long as you're happy doing what you're doing like it should come out of a place of love and, and passion for, for art and creating art and, and as long as you're being paid for it be happy and, and keep doing it because the, the more you do it um, the better your life will get um, I mean, the, the, now I'm back to talking you know in, in, in a very cliche way well, but, but it's so true and to be honest it's, it's, it's beautiful to hear that you know that you kind of get the point where you are right now because you were very passionate about it, you know. It's not, it's not something that was forced, and you know you can tell like there's a lot of people that really want to get there and they work their ass right. off. And in the end, it pays off, you know. But sometimes people are just complaining like, oh, how is like, how is it, it's not happening? Like, I don't have like any, you know, AAA title or anything. You know, just keep on doing that, and you will finally get there. It's like it's exactly. there is no golden rule, but only devotion and passion. You know, so I think that's exactly. what you said was really great. So yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and and you should definitely have goals. I mean, if if for example, ILM yeah, send or, or, or high well, and go there. You know? Yeah, so. yeah. But but don't don't um, don't stress out. Don't, don't yeah don't stress so much over it and I, th that would probably the that would probably be the one thing that i would tell myself but again it, that that would have probably changed my my journey so i i have no regrets in that sense but i remember being very very heartbroken uh the first time i got um i was so close to getting a, a job at lucasfilm at one point yeah uh, very early on in my career and yeah. and for for some reason, it didn't happen. Like the, they just uh, they reached out to me. I was super excited, and then <laughs> I didn't hear back. Uh, and I can't remember what the job was, <laughs> but it was just fucking heartbreaking. And I was so crestfallen and and, and um, uh, pissed off. Um, and it really sucked. It really fucking sucked for a long time. I was re yeah. really bitter over it. Um, but then, you know, eventually. I got to work for Lucasfilm uh, doing these Star Wars films, and it's a very strange, strange thing when you have these these grandiose uh, goals for yourself because it's a very empty search in the end. Uh, I'm not saying that that Star Wars by any means sucked to work for; it were great experiences, but it's not going to be that, uh, that as mind blowing as you think it is. Like you're going to realize that. Oh, maybe that that you know that small project that I did turned out to be um, More fun. For, for that small independent studio that I did two years ago that I thought was shit at the time. Now that I think yeah. back on it, you know that was the best I've ever you know felt about a job. You know I was appreciated. You know we had a lot of fun and uh, everything just clicked. And and but but you, you know you don't see it at the time because you're so focused on. On landing these these great big jobs and and um, uh, I, I, that that would be something that I would just yeah. Sometimes you know, people have like a super people. high expectations of you know like those companies, but in the end it's just you know you can kind of engage with the client, but in the end it's just another job. And and I know you yeah. also um, um, developed your IP, so uh, of course we can talk about it later. Uh, about something that you are doing on your own, because I think 
it's something that's very rewarding for every artist in the end. We had a couple of the guys before on Level Lab that were uh, developing their own IPs, and you know, you can tell how excited they are about it. You know, I mean, it's good to have yeah. like commercial work. It's good to have like a you know like great titles and everything. But in the end, it's just another project, and you are just a small kind of you know worm in that whole pipeline <laughs> and doing <laughs> stuff. So exactly, yeah. And that's why it's important. Yeah, I would definitely encourage anyone who's passionate about art and, you know, uh, maybe you don't do it straight away, but, but have, um, have, a, have a project of your own. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a, you know, a book or a short film or anything like big like that. It could be just a, you know, a story that you want to tell and that you put up online mm -hmm. for, for anyone to see. Um, that, just that feeling of being the creative lead and, and to, to, yeah. to do your own vision. Um, just your is, own ideas. Very rewarding. You direct, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So how for you it clicked? Like, what was the time that you started kind of, because I know you did plenty of like personal pieces and they always kind of try to, um, as I look at them, they always tell some story. And there was a right. moment that you started those uh, your own projects and your own short. What was that, you know, motivation? What drives you there to actually start uh, doing it? Derek, before we go there, I just wanted to uh, show mm, you guys yeah. um, the project we are talking about is uh, it's uh, State Zero. Um, it's a Absolutely. short. You can, see, um, you can see online on YouTube. Just type in State Zero, and you can watch this uh, sixteen-minute long short, and probably a little longer. Uh, That's awesome, um, yeah. yeah, it's really cool, um, top notch, really, and um, yeah, um, Andre is uh, developing this to be something bigger, and uh, let's see um, where, where what we can talk about here. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us how it all started with State Zero? And um, yeah, well, well, the, yeah. So, yeah. so State, um, I'll try to be um, somewhat brief with this. Um, but um, yeah, State Zero was definitely born out of uh, out of um, uh, I was just very discouraged on a project that I was working on, and uh, I, I was so tired of not having a, a a voice where where the creative direction were were headed in. Uh, you know, it was very it was very frustrating. Was that? Mm -hmm. Flipped the table basically, just like fuck this and doing my own right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, uh, it, yeah. You know what? It's ex exactly like that. Because I was just complaining and whining all the time. Like every day, I was just fucking. I, I could sense myself get, getting more and more bitter. And I could, you know, I could see a lot of other people on the same project be this, just the same way. Like everyone was just like, I've done this for you know uh, sixteen years, and and it doesn't get any better, you know. Uh, and I just, I, I, I didn't want to. And I, knew, I didn't want to, I, I wanted to be able to put, um, you know, my my money where my mouth was. And I was just, um, I was not very pleased with the direction of, of the of the project. And so I just um, started thinking of this, uh, like, what, what would I want to do? Well, I love, you know, I love my, my, my guilty pleasure type of films. Like, I love I'm Legend. I love War of the Worlds and all these mm -hmm. you know, like classic genre, big genre movies. Like high concept films, so I just started thinking of uh, well, let's uh, let's see if we can um, take something like that and bring it back home to Sweden. Like to to, to just make a make a. I had just read the Passage, which is a fucking fantastic book for anyone who's into post apocalyptic stories. Um, and I was so inspired by that book. Um, and so that, that's the name why again? I uh, the Passage. The Passage. Oh, okay. the Passage. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's fucking brilliant. Like it's so good, and um, I just started to to envision this 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 um, this um, uh, sort of world, it's like a similar world, but but in in, in Sweden, where uh, the last humans on Earth had uh, was residing in a, in a big um, in a big dome, essentially, like cut off from from the rest of the world. So, um, is there any concept art you could you could show us from the project or? Um, um sure from the um, short maybe no yeah i can i can show some stuff from the um 
So maybe you can just lay out the world for us. I think it's really exciting to to know that. Sure. Knowing uh, that's are you, Let me just, I'm going to close my blinds here because the sun is just <laughs> making it impossible to see it. My screen. Sun in Sweden. Uh, yes. Sorry. It's the, yes, uh, it's the one day of the year uh, where we get the sun. All right, so do you have my, my screen here? Uh, should I? Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah got it. Yeah, I'll just show a few. So um, these were all done after the short film, by the way, I should point out. So I, d I did the short film. Go ahead. Um, I mean, I wrote the short film and I, I, you know, I wrote it so in a way where it, it wasn't relying on, a, you know, on, you know, on an amazing story. I just wanted to make it feel like a snippet out of a, a larger uh, narrative, mm -hmm. like the opening of a, big, of a movie or a TV show. Uh, so um that that's that's why it's um uh, lay, uh you know uh written the way it uh, it is so it's um uh so wrote it and here? shot it in london uh and um yeah so this is this is uh stockholm one as the uh logo says here so this is a big uh this is a big dome where where uh, the last humans on earth uh, is residing um and Inside, uh, we have okay. I can't even flip. So inside, welcome, welcome we're um, <laughs> yes. Thanks. <laughs> uh, inside is quite miserable. Um, people are, are living in um, uh, you know pretty miserable conditions, and um, it's a story about um, a girl uh, and her journey through. Um, there's this, this uh, the, the post-apocalyptic Stockholm. Uh, I, I can't really tell. I mean, I can't go into detail what the uh, what the story is about, but it's about a girl. Uh, she, she she's living in this atrium uh, that we're calling it, and um, and uh, it's a story about her being reunited with a uh, with a um, person from her past. And it's uh, w whenever people hear about the the full story. Um, they they sort of they realize that because when you look at the short film, it, it feels like it's um, quite um, uh, it feels quite basic in in, in the, uh, mm -hmm. the the way the 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 story is being set up. But but um, the fun thing about the the full story we're developing is that it's um, it's very different from from the short film, and it's a lot more personal, a lot more grounded, um, even though the concept art doesn't really. Um, yeah, it's like, so that. before you even start shooting that, did you have, let's say, like some kind of sketches for, did you pitch that up, you know, for yourself or for your team? Um, yeah, I, 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 that was the fun part. You know, I, I had worked on movies um, for so long at that point that I was, it was really fun to sort of set up a small art department and, you know, um, I had to pitch the project for everyone who uh, we wanted to bring on board uh, and to get them excited because obviously we don't have a lot of uh, money to do it. I had to front the budget myself um, for for the for the shoot uh, for for the VFX portion. I teamed up with a, a VFX company in Sweden um, called uh, Goodbye Kansas, um, who helped me to um, do all the the VFX work. But um, yeah, before that. Uh, there was no deal in place in terms of the effects or, or CGI, so I had I just had to pitch the project to to every new player that came on board, and that was a lot of work. Uh, I did some concept art for that as well. I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find it right now, but um, it's just showing the um, the ship and um, the so that's the still vampires pre, pre short uh, time when you were gathering the team for the. The short you did, right? Or uh, that's after. Uh, are you talking about the concept art or, or the, uh, uh, the uh, about what you just said about? Uh, oh right, all right. No, no, that, that was for the short film. Yeah, so, that was for the short. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, we got a lot of people from uh, Star Wars on board for the shoot, which was, which was really good. Uh, they had a hiatus yeah. at the time. <laughs> yeah. So we got some sound. <laughs> yes, thanks to um, Harrison Ford almost uh, getting his foot cut off um, in the Millennium oh, Falcon okay. set. 
uh, they had to shut the production down for a bit. And um, from from some people um, uh, during that time, because um, the shoot sort of overlapped that hiatus. So we shot it and then took it back to Sweden and did all the post-production um, here in Stockholm at Goodbye Kansas, uh, at Black Studios. So how many and, people uh, were actually, so, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, 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 uh, how many people were involved? Uh, yeah. I think for the short film, maybe 70 in total. Ooh. Uh, so was, there's quite a lot. Uh, there's there's so many like there's so much you don't think of uh, when when you're trying to like it's very easy to say well I'm gonna sh I'm gonna do a short film and uh, there, there, you know I, I've certainly been one of those people who you know underestimate uh, perhaps <laughs> the amount of work uh, and the um, the the challenge of writing itself like it's 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 a completely different beast you know. Something can look, sound and feel very good in your head, but once you, you put it out, <laughs> you put it down on paper, and then you read it again, and it's like, okay, this, okay, this is gonna take some time, and then once you have it in a place where you feel happy and content, then you have to show it to other people, and they have to interpret that the way that you're, you know, hoping they will interpret it, or, or the the way you wanna, you know. Uh, see it come to life um, and that's also a very very you know that's a very big cha challenge um, yeah, so mm -hmm. at that point you started um, developing new skills like di directing and writing right in order to have anything yeah. you had to sort of pursue a new um, branch like how did you mm, learn um did you just happen to direct to her how do you <laughs> actually make it work uh when you just have like cool visuals ability to render realistically so capture ideas and then maybe a basic idea but not do not have any skills in terms of like framing it on paper or yeah um the first time i opened up uh the the uh, the, the script editor and I had a blank page in front of me. I could not put a single word on that page for for you know hours. I would just, I kept looking at it as a as a blank canvas. Uh, it was so difficult for my brain to wrap itself around the fact that I could not use a, a paintbrush for it. And it sounds like I'm the most simple-minded um, nitwit. Uh, in the world when, when, when I say that, but it's, it's, it's very, very, um, it's very true to, to a lot of artists. Like when you try to switch mediums like that, um, it takes a lot of time to, of, um, to get a, to get a good grasp on it. Uh, I, learn the tools. Right? Yeah. 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 It's, it was a completely new, uh, very, very strange experience. Everything you write, um, the first few pages, like the when you first start to write, uh, is is very cliche written. Like it's it's just basically one big cliche, and and mm -hmm. um, you know to a certain extent, I wanted to work with cliches for for state because I wanted to. The focus was more to to show that I could to both to myself and and to the world that, that I could direct something, and and in order to do that, I, I you know I had to streamline the process a bit, and I couldn't have. I, I, you know, I couldn't write a memento, uh, if I, even if I wanted to, but, uh, you know, to, to go that pretentious for the first short film would have been just too obnoxious. Yeah. So um, I wanted to write something that was fairly straightforward and that I could handle. So um, after a while, I had something that, that it just worked for the short film. Um, since then, I've, I've written more stuff. Obviously, we're, we're uh, writing scripts for... Uh, the continuation of of state uh, at the moment, and I've done that for the past year. Uh, it's a, it's a very fun fun challenge, um, and a very frustrating one at times. But um, in terms of directing, yeah, that's that's the big one. I mean, I'm a very introverted person. I don't like big groups of large groups of people. 
I don't particularly like interacting with people. Um, I like to stick, you know, to myself and, 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 you know, there's a reason why I've spent my life in front of a, yeah, you know, uh, drawing, yeah, a sketch pad. Um, so to, 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 to all of a sudden try to go for the, one of the more stressful positions you can have on a, on a movie set, <laughs> uh, was definitely, uh, yet another challenge, but on the other hand, you know, up until this point, pretty much everything that I've uh, that I've tried or take the, that I've taken a stab at creatively have been a you know me diving headfirst into some you know, uncharted waters. You know, I, 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 I I'm a self-taught concept artist, and I've met a lot of I've had to learn myself, and you know, for better or worse, because sometimes when, when you're not schooled and you hit a problem where someone who is schooled um would just solve it immediately you're faced with a lot of stress and anxiety and and uh you feel completely lost and and um okay. like a fucking fraud um so and and the same goes for directing i mean it's it, it's so much more verbal uh you have to you know you have to be able to communicate with words which is not my strong suit uh, i've always communicated better with visuals um drawing and, and and painting that that's that's my so uh, that's my forte so so to, like, to sorry yeah yeah is there like any way for you to uh that you try to kind of level up with those skills you know to to direct or uh you know writing scripts something that will you know kind of help you open up a little bit more and you know try to get the stuff done even if it's not like the ground that you are, you feel comfortable with, it's like any particular thing that kind of helps you uh, getting there. You mean with the with my um, with my concept art, or, or just creatively as a person? No, I or? mean like uh, the directing and script writing. Anything that kind of helps you get better at it, you know. And um, well, yeah. I mean, the, the 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 one thing that helps me getting better is is reading good scripts and, and watching, you know, movies. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not a person who's very good. I'm not a good student. I'm, I'm a terrible student. Um, so I could never, I could never learn that way. So for me, it's always been about breaking down, trying to break down other people's uh, work, the people that I look up to. It started, you know, with the concept art, uh, you know, I was just always looking at Dylan Coles and, and Craig Boland's work. Um, yeah. And I never looked at any tutorials. I wasn't really that interested in tutorials because that it just it just fucking confused me. I was so confused by it. It was just too much to learn. I didn't want to hear all these tools, um, all these <laughs> features that the programs had. It just made me so. It just stressed me out. Again, I'm, I'm, the, I'm like on the complete opposite of that, and that's crazy. <laughs> How different yeah. uh, can artists be? Like I feel completely lost when I don't have a tutorial and this is sort of my starting point to explore and with you it's like completely different it starts from an unknown sort of and branches <laughs> yeah. into narrows down onto the path it's really really inspiring to hear Absolutely. it's yeah it's, it's it's very funny yeah I remember when we worked on on um well when we worked yeah. together recently and and you were sort of behind the wheels I would just look at you and be like I I don't know anything <laughs> It's obvious to me that I don't know anything about what I'm doing because you you were using Photoshop in a completely different way. Yeah, I um, remember when I sat on your um, at your desk and tried to use your Photoshop, I was like swearing each and every word because I was like, "Holy shit, what the fuck is happening here?" Like <laughs> Photoshop CS3, yet a master at his craft. Like I'm Boeing <laughs> here and now. <laughs> yeah, that, that's amazing. Um, you know, um, just a testimony to your uh, your skills and devotion. And um, like, I'm different. I'm trying to explore techniques. You, you are sort of focusing more, I guess, on the story part and trying to use uh, the tools you are comfortable with uh, to deliver every time, which is which is awesome. Considering, <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, I, I mean, I appreciate it. Um, it's def I mean, it's a it's a double edged sword, I would say. Uh, well, you yeah, know, it's it, it, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
I mean, it 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 it, it boils down to me not wanting to waste a lot of time um, looking at. You know, studying. Uh, like I said, I'm a terrible student, so I have no patience. As soon as you start talking about something, my my mind just wandering. My my thoughts just wander, uh, and mm -hmm. it's it's very annoying to be that distracted. I, I don't have like ADHD or something like that. I'm sure of it, but I just have a very distracted mind. I, I'm very unfocused. So uh, the only thing that that gets me a foc like that gets me focused, is when I. Uh, uh, when I'm creative, when I'm being creative, and so it was just so more helpful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just bombard your senses, your, uh, your brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just to the point where I cannot be um, distracted. So, uh, but it's definitely you know, it's it's fun. I, I love I love seeing that that you know I I loved seeing how you used Photoshop because it's just. Um, uh, the, the the feeling is quite mutual it's it's uh it's fascinating to see how much more elegant it it, it can be uh all these tools and all these features can be applied uh in the process um as opposed to how i do it myself like it's uh how much so that, easier yeah. some things that, get that's just i think uh you know being self-taught we all like me Derek, and you we we all are using the same tools with a completely different way, which is yeah. Yeah. extremely fun when you actually meet up and talk about it or see each other work, how we work. And uh, I tend to learn so much because um, I feel like how, like even when I see you use curves or something, a tool as simple as that, I'm like, why haven't I thought about putting curves on screen mode? Like, why haven't I thought about you know just changing something that easy w before? I mean, this is super technical, and I don't want to you know boil down and and dive into those really tiny things. I just wanted to you know put it as being fascinated by the fact how different we are, yet we are still yeah. in the same industry, and uh, that's yeah, really that's cool. that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. I love all of these yeah. pieces you're showing up. So these are for uh, the short or for the? No, so, so, yeah, these are for the full story. So so these are just. Um... Oh, so we have a snippet of what will happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they, these were made after the short film uh, was done. So. That's um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. It's. Um, I did. I did the short film, and then I went to the states and met up with a lot of different agents and and. Um, managers and and uh, it resulted in me going back to Sweden and uh, revitalized and re-energized to, to keep the uh, to, to build this into an IP because uh, when I was done with the short film I felt that okay I'm done with this I don't need to I, I you know I'm fed up with it you know I've, I've spent a year of my life doing this now it's yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm done but uh, after after that trip, I was just uh, I was so full of of um, energy and and, and uh, creative energy. So I started I did all these um, images that I'm showing right now. I I did um, about fifty of them. Um, That's awesome. That, that summer, yeah, and thankfully it was raining a lot that summer. So I I, I was. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you can I just could see spend... your caveman. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was full on caveman mode. Um. But it was fun. Uh, it was fun to build the story simultaneously. So I was I was writing it and and doing all these pictures. I, I mean, all all these um, keyframes um, at the same time. And it was really that was a very fun process to 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 get to know a character and at the same time being able to um, visual, you know, illustrate her um, or or them rather um, at the same time. It was it was a lot of fun. So you're basically hungry of diving deeper and developing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, and then at first it was um, it was uh, we developed it as a feature film, and then it turned into um, a TV show development, and and um, and uh, we've taken it from there. And so it's gone through all of these different um, formats, uh, and we've tried to find something that's appropriate for the story and and i think we finally have it now 
and we have a we have a studio that we've partnered up with so it's it's all moving forward uh, but on wow. the oh, that's, that's pretty awesome. awesome that's awesome yeah like yeah, all thanks. these pieces it's... are i i can see why people want to see it come to life uh i would love to see it uh even n not knowing the story, but just looking at those images, it's really, um, you know, I don't like when sci-fi gets too abstract. I like when kind of near sci-fi is grounded and um, down yeah. to earth. When yeah. there's a mix of familiar and unfamiliar with such a ratio that makes you care. Right. And I can feel it here, which is something like w with The Last of Us. Uh, I felt the same, like really familiar, but right. a piece of it is unknown, giving it a twist that is exactly. It, it's grounded in reality. It's it's a, yeah. a a distorted version of reality, and and I totally agree. Uh, it doesn't work for me when it's too when it's hard sci-fi. It, it just it it's there's a in, uh, there's an immediate disconnect for me. I want I want I want it to be relatable and and um, something that you can you know, uh, understand and relate to in, in some way. So, um, really awesome. Yeah, these are awesome. Yeah, I can't wait Thanks. to see it um, wherever we can see it. I don't know, but um, crossing my fingers for it. it looks yeah, great. thanks. It's, um, so, it's going to be a while, but it's coming. <laughs> so just to just to set the path here, you started from like freelancing from side to side, then you landed that oblivion job which was a breakthrough which sometimes passed and then you got on star wars right and while doing that you did uh, state zero or what was the project sort of how old is that state zero project for now i started in 2013 and it's been going on uh well late 13 early 14 so it's um three years at this point that's mm. awesome. You are also directing, right? You guys work together, so uh, you are also yeah. uh, full time kind of art directing, or? Um, well, it's been full time for the past few months. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm doing. I, unfortunately, I can't talk. I can't really talk about the projects because of the silly NDAs that we have in this sure. industry. But uh, the the three really cool um, projects that 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 just. Um, uh, happened to come our way and and um I, I was very excited to be able to work with uh Wojtek on on one of them um mm -hmm. and yeah, um I tried my best man yeah and you succeeded thankfully <laughs> i didn't have to fire you <laughs> yeah, right. yes. um yeah no it was awesome um and um but but i'm still having one foot uh, in the in the concept world, uh, if there's one thing I've learned is that uh, as, as much as I love directing, and I, I and it's definitely the thing I want to do at this point in my career, um, I want to I want to I want to head in that direction. But uh, I, I realized how much I miss concept art um, uh, after a while, so I, I need to. I need to keep that. Uh, you don't want to move on. You still want it to be your thing, right? Well, I just I, I feel the need to to produce something of my own. I uh, like uh, I mean to, to actually produce art. Like whenever I have a, a period of working, you know, uh, directing wise on something, and but I'm not painting anything. I'm not producing anything per se. Um, it, it's really it really stresses me out. It feels like I'm being lazy, even though I'm working all the time. Uh, and I think that's just, uh, you know, as, as, an, as an artist, I think you're programmed in a certain way where if you're not producing art, it just, it yeah, just bothers. Yeah, I have the soul. Uh, okay. No matter you can be really unhappy. Uh, yeah, sorry. Just... Yeah, go ahead. Like the people talking at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that uh, I'm the same, like, uh, even when I'm super busy with super important stuff like business and just like doing other stuff like traveling and it's still making me a living and I'm not doing art, I feel like I'm not fucking complete. Something is missing and I'm slacking. I'm 
Right. I'm a lazy ass motherfucker, even though I, you know, I slept for four hours doing other things. I still feel the need to go back, and this is so true. And th that's how I think you actually get. I mean, once you get that, and then have a freedom to actually live from from doing that, it's such a joy to get lost in. I I don't know. It's just so thankful think, for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think we are all on, on the same page, kind of, you know, you just try to get there at that's, first. That's like, just passion, you know, um, yeah. trying to get trying to get better right. and, and express stories with what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Just, and in the, yeah. you know, when the time just passed, you just yeah. kind of realize you want to also speak out and, you know, do your own stuff or tell your own story. Uh, of course, yes. it's great to work on, like, commercial projects and big projects, but in the end, it just, you were just a person that want to create and you want to stay creative and maybe under direction of someone else yeah all these parts, so. yeah I, I think that the good the, the good part about having those those um, visions of your own uh, but 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 being stuck doing client work for for a long time and and, and really um, wrapping your head around like the industry and how everything works and how producers mind work and how a production designers mind work, how the pipeline looks and all that stuff is really helpful. Uh, when the day comes that you actually want to, you actually want to do your own project. Cause yeah, because you know that as an, as an, as a young and up and coming artist, you, you're an idealist and, and, uh, you know, you, you don't see the hurdles that, that will come it, it, there's 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 something to benefit from having some restrictions and once once you get into the whole mentality of the industry and and you 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 start to think like a producer even though it, it sounds it sounds very it sounds it doesn't it doesn't sound right when i say it but th there there is something positive about having some restrictions to to your work like if if, if you can apply them to yourself um and still, you know, maintain that sort of creative freedom that you're that you're looking for. But 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 you you set your you, you give yourself some limitations. It will improve your storytelling for sure. Because we all know what happens when uh, when an artist gets full creative control of a, of a project. It usually becomes <laughs> quite you know unrelatable, and it, it it's all over the place, and it's. There's just a you know there's a lovely vision there somewhere, but it's just lost in all the you know uh, all the it's chaos so, of yeah. yeah yeah so um, it, it's good to have that um, to have that um, experience of of, uh, of working within those type of uh, constraints and, and, and limitations. Absolutely, it's like a self discipline, you know, when you. Kind of have yeah. to wake up to the office every day and work for like you know a couple hours and do your stuff. It's, it really helped me, for instance, like you know four years ago when I had four or three years ago when I had the first uh, kind of in-house work. Uh, it was for almost a year, but it really taught me a lot of things of you know how to be uh, on time with things, how to right. kind of structure my day to have time for everything, you know, for work, for art, for myself. You know, right. for sporting or you know, meeting people and all that stuff. So, yeah, awesome. totally. Um, I think we are. Uh, I sent you an email, Andre, now with a piece that we were received on our email that is a request to show it to you and ask for a for a critique. I think it's a, it's in the style of what you've done. Um, sort of it's an environment piece um, cool. you should receive it on your Gmail yeah uh, let me know if, if you got it and yeah, um, got it. If, if you would be so kind to give that person a little feedback uh, yeah if you guys have anything that you want us to take a look at please go ahead and uh, put a link into the chat I'm not sure if you can actually do it but uh, yeah uh, we'll Let's try, try. To go through, through a couple of pieces and if you have any questions, also type, it, type them in now. Um, yeah, so this is a piece by, let me just see, Gerald Recidoro. Recidoro. Um, I, I butchered the name, sorry. Um, and yeah, this is just a request to, uh, to take a look at it. And um, yeah, cool. What are your thoughts? Uh, 
Cool. Um, sorry, this, this is um, just me uh, thinking, so I'm not. Yeah, of course, of course, man. You can take your time, man. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks good. I, I would. Um, I would suggest being the the sort of composition uh, nerd that I am uh, to lower this this floating piece up here. Um, I th I, I, my my eye sort of shoots up too far up too far up into the frame. Uh, this is this is my personal. Again, this is my personal um, opinion, so take it with a what it is. But I would probably want to lower it to somewhere around here. Um, Absolutely. Probably also want to enhance the depth. So it's quite nice and atmospheric. So I would want to. Uh, Put more hazy haziness in the the distance. Uh, put more highlights on the on the uh, floating little rock here. Mm. Um, give it more. Just uh, bring bring up the scale, like the the sense of scale. Uh, I would I would like, like find find a good um, photo to work with, or good photos to work with, and then and, and back some um, some highlights to this side. Um, let's see, and it's been it's been a while since I did the the online class. I <laughs> that was that rusty with. How was that for you as a as a mentor as a teacher? Oh, it, it was uh, it was fun. It was fun. It was uh, it, again that's was not that was amazing. Not oh, thanks. <laughs> I was being way too kind. Fast learning. Uh, I don't know about amazing, but it was definitely a good way of like improving, mm. uh, like how quickly you can feedback on something, like how you break down and. Uh, break down a painting and, and how quick, quickly you can do it because I usually take a lot of time to look at something and uh, my, my yeah, brain I, is just I, operating I, slowly. I kind of have the same but when someone is sending you over like a, like a base or even like a finished piece you can kind of relate it and you know kind of translate your ideas to, to your own mind and you know you can start right. building the stories around it and this is like um, I did a mentorship last time as well. I'm finding the uh, the next ones, but I think it's right. super uh, kind of it's it's it taught me a lot of things as well as a because I don't I didn't want to feel like a mentor. I wanted to also get engaged with those people. So right. you kind of you know you're also learning a lot during those. You know even how to guide them, how you could be oh, yeah. directing them. You know because when you are always in the point that you are doing stuff that. Uh, when someone else is directing for you, it's quite different when you actually are giving the feedback or trying oh, yeah. to, you know, so it's a really good lesson. Like for me, it was a great, so that's why I was really interested to hear your opinion about it. Yeah, no, no you're, I totally agree. Uh, it, it, it taught me a lot, um, way more than I probably realized. Um, like you said, it's uh, like you have to be able to. Now you have to break it down, not someone else. Like you, you uh, as an employed concept artist or, or just a freelancing concept artist, someone else is always determining whether or not your work is good. And, and once mm -hmm. once that is put in your like, once you're in the driver's seat uh, and you get to decide, then yeah, it's a very different experience. Um, it makes you more confident after a while. Absolutely. In your, in your yeah. abilities. Um, and even when you have some of the students that are actually super technically, you know, uh, educated, yeah. and you can kind of get to know things from them, which is like, you know, kind of mutual kind of thing that, uh, you know, grows within the mentorships and kind of I, feel uh, like it's super fun, you know, journey for, for, um, for those who are actually giving the lessons as well. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's awesome. I love how you're putting a, a lot more um, sort of rest with the atmosphere into it. I, I sort of start to feel the, the space uh, opening a little more. The mystery, mystery lines. Right. You know. Yeah. It's just um, whenever there's something in the sky, my, my, my go-to move is always to is to uh, haze it up. Like obviously, this is. I mean, this is a very very quick thing. It looks yeah, of course it looks bad, but um, it's just that uh, a night. You always want to put a nice sky like uh, in your in your frame. Uh, it's you know you want to have nice clouds and dramatic lighting. But whenever you have an object in the sky, or especially if it's like in if it's a major focal point. Um, then it easily becomes very distracting when you have a, um, a dramatic sky mm. on top of that. Mm. So uh, that's mainly what I'm trying now is to see how how you could um, make it a little a little more simple, or like a sim simplified version of that. Um, trying out some volumetric. Uh, so dim down some of the noise in the background, right? Um, yeah. yeah, I think that. Yeah, and it's all—it's—it's all, it's always about for me. It's always about simplifying, like how how can I make the the, the most simple composition um, possible uh, and still get all of the the elements in there that I need to that I need to put in there. Um, that 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 that's you'll get you you'll you'll notice that that. The simpler it gets, the, the the easier it gets to be mm -hmm. approved. But so there is a question in the chat. Do you plan to do more teaching in the near future? Um, I'm not. I'm not sure yet. I I, I hope to. But right now, um, I have so much other stuff go uh, lined up on on on. Sure. Over the summer and and this fall, so. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to be able to squeeze it in again, but uh, it's probably coming. Uh, just don't, I just don't have a an ETA. Yeah, stay tuned, guys. Right now, it might, it might happen. Uh, yeah. So, Andre, when you are done with this one, I sent you another one. Uh, right. So there was um, a piece sent by. Uh, let's see. Let's see, Bartosz Letki. Um, oh yeah, the curves, of course. <laughs> of course, the curves. Always yeah, the curves. Yeah. I'm Could really happy to see it? those things again happening on level up. It's like a bit getting back to the roots. <laughs> some beams and uh, some oblivion post-processing. Absolutely. Right. You know That's it. Nice. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if this is helpful uh, in the least. Yes, it uh, is, of course. But we are pretty sure it is. So. Yeah, if you can save it somewhere or just leave it open for now, it will be great. Uh, I sent you another one. Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, man. I, I love seeing the depth just like... I mean, of course, it's super fast, but um, looking at yeah. the thumbnail in the top right made it uh, way more epic sort of in that sense. right because i think if i if i can just quickly show you now uh i'm just gonna see if i can put some uh like what i mean with um highlights on the those mountains i mean i'm pretty sure everyone knows what i'm talking about but just the way it, it immediately pops um let me see if i can find something here mm. Okay, fuck it. I'm just gonna. This is not the right one, but it's a quick test. Dark, what are you doing there? Fucking dancing with your underpants? Yeah, I, tr I, I just changed my position. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you changed the apartment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, there is some sex sexiness going on right now on the screen. <laughs> you cheater! You cheater! You use photos. I thought you painted it all the time. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me disperse your bubble. We are canceling the fucking session. Uh, Everybody get the fuck out. Forward. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> use flash. I, 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 I do Freeze. use it. Sort of. <laughs> Every now and the now and yeah, again. Man. Concept of uh, police, you know, is on its way. Right. There are always. Oh, some. I better hurry up then. But they are watching, and that's a good point, you know. So. Right. Yeah, this is this is cool. Like just a little bit of uh, form um, information, like how the form yeah, turns yeah, the exactly. mountain makes all the difference. Yeah, and it, it, all of a sudden you can feel scale. Um, you know, even though, absolutely. yeah, even though this is, you know, again, it's very, very rough. But, but as soon as you get some, some nice texture there and some highlights, and you can, you can really sense the form. And now you can start to bring in some, some details to the sky, if you want to, um, and, and, and have a look at. I, I would suggest staying with a very, very atmospheric sky for now, um, and then work in. The, like, oh my God, I don't have anything here. Um, this is not my. Okay. If I can, I'm pretty oh, sure I, this I is... know it's, uh, there is a question. Um, sorry, I think that might be a little bit cliche, or maybe it's not the right place for it. But um, have you tr like, do you try also to do photos, or is like you know because I know it's no. kind of yeah. I that's what I wanted. That's what I think for it. I would hear because there is a lot of things. You know, there, there is a lot of textures and a lot of websites like. The one that right. Vortex is running, for instance, for the bash for G. And to be honest, yeah. I'm using it all the time at work. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, 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 I don't like, take my own photos. I take Vortex photos. That's uh, oh that's yeah, the, that's not only mine. Okay. Photo bashers, you you fucking photo bashers have not <laughs> Shame on you. Yeah, so the, the, uh, again, the, this was not the right photo for this one, but fuck it. Uh, you, you get the, you get my point. Yeah, so, just, just uh, put more interest in the, in the sky, right? Yeah, yeah. I just want to have something here in the like. Now you have a great opportunity here in the sky to put some. If you put it around here, like so, lead the eye up to up to this floating thing, um, and I think um, I think you're in a good spot. And then bring in some. You can bring in more t detail to the. To the uh, silhouette over here on, on on the mountain right here, like bring in some nice some of that nice jagged um, uh, uh, edge that, that that you get from a real from a real uh, mountain and yeah. then yeah. Anyway, awesome. uh, that's great. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's an right. aerial, aerial shot, which I cool, cannot, yeah. despite more doing myself, aerial shots are the craziest devil to me. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I immediately want to flip it that way. That would be my first comment. Um, I think that's composition wise, that, that makes more sense. Um, I would probably haze, you know, put more haze here again in the horizon uh, for now, and and then you can bring back the details uh, later on. But more haze in the background will will help with the depth as well. That's a general tip that you should. Uh, maybe we'll print a T-shirt for you like this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> more you haze, motherfucker. <laughs> Hey, is that uh, a bitch? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm being a cruel host, goddammit. <laughs> yeah. It's hell of a bastard. No, th but um, this is this is very true. Like uh, this is what I'm under uh, underestimating myself in my work too. Just like putting some love with those epic environment pieces with the big soft brush and just like yeah, filling it out and looking at a good reference uh, or ex or remembering an experience. Uh, while you were traveling, or uh, exactly. when you felt the epicness, you know yeah. why have you felt the epicness? Was it 
because of the amount of haze? Was it because of the scale of things? Was it because of the colors or how things overlapped and coding that? More often than head. not, more often than not, it's about the haze. <laughs> let's yeah, let's right. yeah, yeah, we'll do that t-shirt for sure. sure. Yeah, uh, it's it's about the haze. Uh, don't don't kid yourself. Like most of the f nice photos that you've ever seen, like uh, that that re re really really nice, or the nice the nicest frames in a in a movie. Why does it look nice? Well, it's probably an interior, and it's probably full of smoke, so it's very very yeah, hazy, right. and and all the lights are glowing. Uh, this is the oldest trick in the book, but it always works. Now um, you know. Look at the look at the the difference in in depth just by doing this little tweak. Like all of a sudden, I can feel now a distance here, um, uh, and and you can, you know, th from this point onward, you can add, you know, stuff uh, in the distance, uh, and it'll be it'll come so like it's so easy. Like uh, you you only need like a. Soft yeah. brush, and all of a sudden you have, you know, these mountains here, uh, and you don't have to do that much. Um, yeah, it sort of looks like all the work is sort of done. You just sort of need to put it in the perspective, Ariel perspective, and uh, prioritize things, decide, and put the sil put puts the put the silhouettes out, like sort of separate the planes, right? Yeah, and and stay with like try to have soft transitions. Uh, that's another thing. Um, uh, you know, when I um, th th this has th this image has all the, the the right ingredients. It's all about just softening it up. Again, I would I would uh, probably um, maybe I would just brighten up uh, the planes here in the background just a little. Um, and then okay. make the foreground here, like the, the shade, um, the, the, this big tree here, or whatever it is, maybe cast some like a big shadow here. Uh, that way, if this if this area right here in the foreground is a bit darker, you can you can light it uh, or bring back some of the contrast to it by having some of these. Uh, there's like tiny scattered fires here. Uh, maybe you can place them. A more str str uh, in a more strategic strategic way, so m maybe you have them gathered somewhere around this area, uh, and you kill the ones down here, and I get rid of the smoke right here. Uh, try to center the focal points, the, like the major focal points around this area. Um, bring bring back some of the smoke uh, and pull it pull it here instead. Uh, I mean, add it here instead. Um, yeah, and, and and all of a sudden, you know, it's your eye is not bouncing around frame. Your your eye is sort of staying oh, uh, in. Um, it's basically uh, focused in this general the area. Out, yeah? yeah, yeah, I yeah, I, I want the eye to to easily, very easily, read this this part of the frame. Um, I would probably. Bring out this. I would. I would want to place this. Uh, the the other whatever it is, the tree thingy uh, over here. Um, just um, yeah, now, I'm really. <clears throat> this up, but my point just again. Put it a little bit. Farther from the corner of the piece. Yeah, exactly. Um, and just cent center um, all the major. It's not having the you know, such massive distances between. Yeah, it's simple points. tools. You have like really, you know, like big difference. Yeah, and, and th there is an opportunity to repeat those shapes in the distance too, so that you get even more read exactly. out of it. Yeah, yeah. Th and that's another good way of um, bringing oh, depth, some of course. Dylan Cole feels starts to happen. Uh, you know, know all my tricks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you got a hazy those. sunset. Uh, the pink yeah. hazy sunset situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sound so. Uh, you 
You sound so. Um, yeah. How do I sound? Uh, I'm trying to find the right word. You sound um, experienced. A learned man. Yeah. It's just that. Just make it a sunset, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Go, go <laughs> I'm only Sit joking. Down. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's either a blue hour or a sunset so yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah it, it, we're but you know we're, we're all working with uh with uh, all the all the tricks in the the book here but we, we do it for a reason and uh, it's because it works so awesome. we we can uh, allow ourselves to be um a little um um i don't know unoriginal as long as it works yeah, you can put all the those kind of simple principles to even like the most interesting composition, and it's still be even as you said, it's not original. It's the piece itself can be original with exactly, unoriginal, yeah. unoriginal choices. But if it works, you know, who the exactly, cares? yeah, yeah, exactly. That is a much better way of putting it. Uh, <laughs> just use use um, techniques and and uh, tricks that you know work, and and let the subject matter be the unique part of of um of your painting it's like mm -hmm. you, you can really go to town on these mega structures and give them a lot of like uh, give them nice like an, uh, a really nice unique silhouette and and um what's going on here like what, what do we see on them um all of that stuff you can really um go to town on uh once you have the uh, the general atmosphere and then the tone of, of, of the piece um, worked out and uh, just look at a nice photo or like you'll realize how you know that, that the reason it looks nice is probably because it's a sunset or there's lots of haze or there's a really cool extreme angle all of these very um, um, you know not really original um, how would you go about the, the foreground in this piece? Uh, it feels like it started, it, it melted into this one big shape. And uh, what would be your advice on um, breaking it up or making it um, sort of sit in the same environment? Making it read, how would you make it read? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I um, well, first, of, first of all, the, the water, think of... Uh, um, always keep this in mind that the water is always reflecting the sky so the water would not be this blue to start with uh that's a bit distracting um would probably be something more like this or like if it's the surface is uh, is um there's waves on the surface then then of course it can take it can take different um and different qualities but but um i would probably Maybe. take some of these fields like um to tie the image together uh, like to tie the in the, the background together with the foreground i would probably add some more of those fields that you see and, and bring them you know bring them uh, to the simplify. foreground as well uh yes simplify again um I would try to simplify it as much as I could. This yeah. find a good photo for it. It helps. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe even kill the water and or well, maybe you can have the water still, but uh, maybe you you bring the the yellow field out and and cover this whole area with with, uh, with the same. same and look. you would pretty really distinctly see the shadow right on the ground from the tree. What's that? Sorry. And you would really distinctly see the shadow from the tree if you have like the ground, the grass everywhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Then you don't. You, you then you don't have to think about what what could be in the shadow. Yeah, exactly. The, um, yeah, that would probably be my my. Awesome. Thank you so yeah, much for doing that. Um, I have the last one for you, and we can make it a quick one. It's an interior. I just sent it to you. And that will be our final, um, final yes. overpainting for today. 
Uh, we're right. stretching the time a little bit here, but I hope it's not an issue. Uh, we're just like seven minutes no. past. No worries. Time. Um, cool. There you go. This is uh, artwork from. Okay, let me just open it up the email quickly here. Let me find this. There you go. It's uh, Michael van den Hovel. Hevel. Okay, that's an epic right. Um And then that's it. That's just an, an interior. Nothing else to add. How would you? Go about making it more cinematic. Uh, same sounding. thing. <laughs> oh, same, same thing. Here we go. Here we go. Face <laughs> right yourself. Um, shit, shit, shit. What? Here comes the atmosphere. <laughs> um, Ship yeah. it. Done. Uh, Fair for sure. Um, think about what else you would, would like. What's this for? If this is a personal piece and you can do anything you want, then I would probably suggest um, putting more stuff in the foreground. Maybe put a character or something in there. I don't know. Um, God race always works, of course. Maybe some dead body that's lying on the floor and it's like actually <laughs> lit. Yeah, so it's head cut off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of that, but uh... oh, right. maybe you have some, some subconscious man, subconscious. Some yes, weird yeah. stuff happened to you in the past. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know what you what to think. Yeah. <laughs> so LL scared. I must have had a fucked up childhood I, I i think that that uh maybe some stronger highlights on the floor as well okay i'm gonna totally sheet the sheet the, the fuck out of this but um oh yeah boy here it goes here we go yes. all right hold there on. you go hold on hold on, <laughs> hold, on. Uh, hold on to your hold on my beer. god damn it flipping <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, tables yeah. boy Uh -oh, curves uh -oh, uh -oh. Some curves. <laughs> Holy shit, this is amazing. I just blew my own mind. OK, so a lot of people asking about Jonas. Uh, I think Jonas is on the flight right now. He's flying from one part of the world to the other, and he couldn't really join us today, which is a shame, and we'll beat, beat him to death probably. Uh, so don't worry about it. We try to postpone that session so every one of us can join, <laughs> like four times. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. We, we will make that up. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's a little, he's can... a little princess. He's our little star. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll never forget gonna... him. I uh, forgive him yeah. for this. All right, so ship it, boy. Some stronger highlights. Some more bounce light of this. Uh, oh, some warmness. Warm. This piece starts to be vivid and living, so. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. Uh, there we go. Nice. Beautiful. Um, let's see what else can we do. We can add some more stuff in the foreground again. Um, make it feel more alive uh some old candles and stuff perhaps you can bring some <clears throat> highlights to it if you want um Maybe remember to keep it subtle yeah exactly um uh, another vase of some kind standing here um Put that head on them. So just populating it, basically, right? Yeah, populating it. Um, maybe think about what you want to have as a big second read on this. Like if it's, let's say, character, um, I would think about the placement there. Maybe it's a character standing 
looking out the window. Um, in that case, if you put them over there, I would probably want to flip the image like this. Maybe uh -huh. play around with the like the maybe you get a nice shadow here in the uh, oh shit now my headset is about to die. Okay, I think we have about two minutes left. Or okay. One. Cool. Um, <laughs> it just had that warning signal, uh, but I'm hoping that that you kind of get the it's, point of where I'm going with this. Yeah, it's super nice, man. Really great. Yeah, thanks. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna take credit for. So, uh, th like, the theme seems kind of uh, like unified for all of those paint overs. It looks like uh, it just sort of needs more rest space uh, and, and like um, prioritization yeah. of silhouettes and deciding what your read is and where your eye would go and then building around that exactly. area. Yeah. Yeah, just block them out and use lots of, and lots and lots of atmosphere. You can scale down the atmosphere. I mean, you can tone down the atmosphere as you go along. Um, like with this one, like the, the edge here is too glowy, I think, for this big, uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, yeah. big centerpiece. So uh, just, you know, you can bring back some sharpness and, and silhouette to it. Um, but yeah, that, that would be the general feedback for, from, from me. Andre, yeah, thank you great. so much for joining us today. That was I wanted to one last question. Sorry. One thank last you. Question. There's one last question we have to ask you. We asked that question. All right. Every guest is being asked that question. Is Go that, ahead. would you rather be a Godzilla or a billionaire? <laughs> a, a Godzilla or a billionaire? Yes. Yeah. Considering Why? the art of the Godzilla movie. Hmm. Right. Um, well, I would rather be a billionaire. There you go. Um, so yeah, that was um, that was a kind of a no-brainer for me. Uh, well, why is that? Why not, why, why not the Godzilla? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I I'm you a total materialist. Him. I'm a total you capitalist. Could... <laughs> <laughs> okay, you could actually pay your own if you were uh, billionaires. Well, I, I would be a billionaire and I would just buy a Godzilla costume. Yeah, maybe that's what you said, but but yeah. <laughs> so you're you could, you're considering yourself a qu quite a big person then, right? To be able to kind of give the same impression. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> so yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it just goes in line with the with my hubris. Thank you so much for sharing all these stories and uh, everything. You painted a beautiful picture here from the very first paintings to to Star Wars State Zero and we're all crossing our fingers for the project and can't wait to see it alive. I mean it's alive but not yet released and we're all waiting for for it to happen and uh, good luck from yeah. the whole Level Up community and big thank Absolutely. you for sharing your time and knowledge. Um, we're really yeah, thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you so much guys. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Let's Absolutely. do it again. Great, Thank you. Great, great times, man. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. And for, for, the, for the people who are watching us, uh, we will announce something pretty soon because we uh, we sat down. We always say that. Yeah, yeah, but we, we sat down lately and just, you know, start brainstorming about the next level up and how to push it farther uh, because we felt that, you know, eager to do that again. So um, there will be some uses coming on. So uh, keep your eyes peeled stay and tuned. stay tuned. Yeah. Cool. See you guys. Bye. Bye. See ya. See ya.